Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about China balloons and UFOs. Well, this has a lot to do with the recent, I don't know, end of January to beginning of February sighting of a balloon. I'm going to put a edit here, despite my producers and the people behind the glass. I want to give a shout out to Demi, making it through surgery. Thinking about you. Here's to a fast recovery. Hope you get better soon. So we have a string of articles and so many things I found on this when I did my little research. So I'm probably going to be jumping around a lot, but most likely I read an article. I'll pick one, which is like the New York Post. And I read it word for word, interjecting my own fucking two cents here and there. But in general, my view on um, UFOs, or I'm not, I'm not bucking the trend. I'm not. Well, I am, I guess. I, I'm not talking about UAPs, and they want us to change the name and all that shit. So bullshit. But anyway, these things come for me in cycles. Now that I'm fifty something. <clears throat> You'll always have something like this, because in the future it's going to be insects, it's going to be birds with cameras and high sophisticated scanning equipment. I mean, we, balloons and stuff like that, we're already, you know, we're finding the best ways to utilize them, and this article has a little bit of insight into that. But, again, going into one of these type of podcasts, which I'm probably going to put into my fucking, I don't know, sciences maybe, but... This is a thing that happens in the world over and over. This happened to have been, you know, escalated in the U.S. And we'll get to that when I read the article. But there were unidentified flying objects, UAPs, whatever you want to call them, every day all over the world. But what you don't have is real good footage of a UFO craft or an alien and stuff. What you're going to get, and it's going to increase is an awareness of these things that are out there already. And again, we can go back to, you know, the 70s and 80s, people building their own little cars and, you know, having, you know, like a hobby of it. And then they got little helicopters. And now we've got drones. And this is from the 70s to now. My friend's got a drone with a super camera on it. It's just getting silly to think we have aliens visiting us and doing anal probes and that type of shit anymore i'm gonna say it's all espionage type you know maneuvers by governments and maybe black op whatever the fuck you want to call them and they're all using their technology and they're trying to you know get ahead of the other person and i'm not oblivious to the fact that the united states is out of their fucking minds but well, we are since i'm here you have any fucking nations we have troops in all over the country? Like, wh how many wars and shit we've done in this quote-unquote democracy? So I'm not surprised that people don't know what the fuck we're doing. Especially when you have a knucklehead like Biden in the fucking presidency. Let alone fucking Trump. The worst disaster in the world. But Biden's not too much better. And Biden might even be worse because he had serious shit he did in the early 70s or the 70s to 80s he's been in this government a long time and he's done some fucked up shit with some of the things he did with the buses and things like that but you know now he was vice president and now president like i don't give him that credit as far as i'm concerned he's another shitty president you want to debate who's shittier fine but getting into this podcast and what this whole thing is for I go through life and I find these things and I do deep dives and I've never been convinced of a extraterrestrial presence, although I love X-Files and stuff like that. And I'm a dreamer and a role player, blah, blah, blah. This to me, this has clearly been always some you know, special ops stuff. And it's going to be stuff that's going to be, you know, classified and all this stuff. They'll make up stories. I mean, it's just... I'm not surprised, and I don't, like, again, I can go down, we can do a seven-hour podcast with me going down every rabbit hole, so 
this is like being held as like the Chinese balloon incident. It went from January 28th to February 4th. And that we actually saw the uh, balloon launch and we knew everything. It didn't do normal things like balloons do. Fine, whatever. We even have uh, the article and the changing of our strategy when looking for things, right? And, then, oh, no, now we find these things. Like I said, we're going to be dealing with insect cameras and surveillance equipment, which we probably are already. And the fact that my friend has drones, like we can all get our hands on drones. This is not surprising. It's actually, in my opinion, expected. And again, you have nations around the world want to know what the fuck people are doing, what's going on. Fine. If you're telling me that they're going to look to invade our shores and waiting for ports to open and to sneak some ships in and take, like, I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, in general terms, I would be concerned about unidentified flying objects to begin with. If they extraterrestrial, well, that's just a little far-fetched for me. But it is a concern. But it is something that I think all the nations are doing and have been doing and will continue to do. Even if there was a one-world government type thing, you'd still have this stuff going on. And, of course, it's going to increase the tensions between U.S. and China. And, you know, we'll get into that with political stuff because it's all part of the same game. I've describe my political views in a sense and i'll sum it up as to me it's two it's two heads of the same snake i don't care if you're democrats or republican you're part of the same corrupted system in america and i have no faith in it or i, I don't give a fuck you're all fucking mostly losers although like anything even police or something of course there are people who are good and go to do these jobs and serve their country and want to do the right thing and they're good people. I'm not, you know, condemning no, them. But in general, this is a, you know, it's what part and parcel of what they do. They'll put the, you know, stories out now because way too many people have cameras, way too many people are catching things here and there. Of course, it'll never be good footage of real extraterrestrial UFOs, but things you just can't understand. And I think that'll be the cycle that goes on forever until there's a threshold hit with some sort of technology and you know everybody in their sister will have like a 24-hour you know access to like cameras and whatever there's a movie called deja vu that was pretty cool denzel washington that's more of a time travel thing but what is you know i did my podcast on science breakthroughs and medical breakthroughs i'm always nerding out over these things and my friend Demi, we have these discussions and we get into a lot of the ins and outs of this and we sometimes, well, a lot of times come at the problem from different angles, but we sort of sort of get to the point where we agree on certain things and granted, if you want to say, you know, let's go far-fetched out there for me and that would be, we found an ancient probe from another civilization and we backward engineered it right so all we've been seeing is maybe things that look like ufos but they're really and let's say it's not even our government it's another government and so on and so forth but i think in the year you know 2023 we're getting this incident and things like this i think it'll just be a constant thing that they'll have to do to cover up their own espionage stuff so there's a little ramble before i even get to an article and like i said i can go down seven hours more with all the articles that I could have hit. And I just decided to go with this New York Post article by Yaron Stenbunch. Stenbunch. Um, and it's titled, Why the Sudden Surge in UFO Sightings After Chinese Balloon Saga. And it just kind of has a to-the-point summary of what's going on. And I'll begin reading it now. Again, I'll put the link to the article in the description. And usually a lot of these articles, even the fucking New York Post... We'll have highlighted words and links that you'll hit it as I'm going through it. And some of these places have a listen to. So you don't have to listen to me. Like the whole article is read by somebody. Anyway, again, this is from the New York Post. It's an article by Yaron Steinbuch. Is that a Steinbuch? Steinbuch? Why the sudden surge in UFO sightings after Chinese balloon saga? The recent publicized spate of UFOs spotted off in the North 
over North America has left some wondering whether aliens are invading Earth. But the reason for the sightings is not so out of this world, experts say. Quote, at any given moment, thousands of balloons float thousands of feet above the ground, including many sent aloft by the U.S. government and military and private entities. Paul Fetkowitz, president of Kmont Consolidated Industries, a maker of high-altitude balloons in Melbourne, Florida, said to the New York Times. Again, there's a link to the Times article. While the objects have long been observed by pilots, military personnel, and civilians, it only seems as if there are more... What? It only seems as if there are more, at least partly because of the recent sightings being publicized, experts say. Well, yeah, I mean... Quote, for years, you didn't hear anything about balloons. Now, we're on the lookout for any kind of flying object. Terry Deschler, a emeritus professor of atmospheric science at the University of Wyoming, told the outlet. U.S. Air Force fighter jets recently shot down four sus- suspicious objects in a little over a week. Famously, beginning with a Chinese spy balloon that was downed over the Atlantic Ocean after it traversed the entire country. According to experts, there are thousands of high-flying, high-altitude balloons in use at any given moment. Well, hello. Three additional unidentified flying objects, one over Alaska on Friday, a small metallic balloon over northwest Canada, northwestern Canada on Saturday, and a third octagonal object over Lake Huron, uh, hold on, that's like a Tolkien thing. On Sunday, were then ordered shut down by President Biden. The last three objects have not been linked to China, other countries, or aliens, for that matter. Well, see, again, this is just going to be the trend that you see going on, but I'll continue. Air Force General Glenn Von, Von Herk head of the U.S. North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, and Northern Command, NORCOM, made sensational headlines Sunday when he said he couldn't rule out little green men, forcing the White House to quickly issue a clarification the next day that the U.S. has no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity tied to the objects. Okay, so right here, this this paragraph in this article is a red flag for me it's just right whatever you're always going to get these comments made and then clarification you know this will go on again and again but i'll continue a former norad commander suggested monday that the most recently shot down trio may have been launched by non-chinese adversaries to test the u.s reaction the seeming proliferation of suspicious airborne objects could simply stem, at least partially, from focused attention on what the U.S. government now refers to as unidentified aerial phenomena, or UAPs. <laughs> you fuck yourself. And by the way, I notice these things is, you know, for some reason, and you can tell when the lingo changes and the zeitgeist is trying to be moved by something. You can just feel it sometimes, and... This is important, I guess. <sighs> Which have been long observed by pilots, military personnel, and civilians, according to reports. In recent days, the U.S. also has sought to enhance its radars and atmospheric tracking to more closely monitor the nation's aeros- airspace after the incident with the Chinese balloon. By the way, I saw a thing. I did a little deep dive. So, you know how many cameras we have pointed out of earth to the space and how many from space are like it's ridiculous okay i don't rule out and i do admit to a concern about unidentified flying objects but this story trend of clarification and oh green men and like you're always going to interject this and then try to clarify it because i think it's getting more and more you know understood maybe if you compare it to like you know the decline of religion or something that 
there might be life out there, but it's not exactly coming and visiting us and kidnapping people. Anyway, I'll continue with the article. Experts warn the move could result in a rash of false alarms about the objects. There is also the psychological phenomenon known as the frequency illusion, a type of cognitive bias that causes people to notice things more after first hearing about them, the Daily Beast noted. Now, there's a link to that, and I love that they put a little science, neuro, uh, psychological blurb in there, because you would be surprised at how susceptible the human brain is to things, especially in groups and hearing things. It's just mind-boggling. You could do another deep dive on that type of stuff alone. But cognitive biases, you can go look that up. It's, there was a time where I felt like I studied it for years. In addition, the latest spotting of high-up objects comes as the Pentagon has undertaken a new push in recent years to investigate military sightings of UAPs. This past summer, the Pentagon formed the all Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. <laughs> oh, shit. Now, why isn't it say Adaro next to it? How come I don't see the fucking acronym for it? Okay, because you have it there. A-D-A-R-O. Come on. All right. The All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office which has reviewed 366 reports of UAPs, finding them to be mostly items such as balloons, drones, birds, or aerial clutter. Still, 171 sightings remain officially unexplained. And by the way, there are people out there like, you know, oh, that one thing, what if that one thing is it? You know, what if that one? Okay, whatever. Each year, a National Weather Service launches about 60,000 balloons into the stratosphere, which extends to a height of roughly 30 miles, according to the Times. The agency's balloons are designed to reach an altitude of 20 miles, far higher than any of the objects detected in the past few days. By comparison, the typical commercial plane cruises between about 6 and almost 8 miles above sea level. Hmm, interesting. Fetkowitz said these weather balloons were designed to eventually burst and break into fine particles. But that alone can explain things. Though some might have been underinflated and could remain intact as they float aimlessly because they never fly high enough to burst. A balloon launched in Denver might land in New Jersey, he told the Times. NASA NASA also runs a program in Texas that has launched more than 1,700 balloons on lengthy scientific missions over the years with payloads weighing up to four tons, the outlet reported. Another reason for the sharp rise in sightings may stem from the U.S. government's effort to publicly destigmatize the topic of UAP and publicly note and recognize the potential risk they pose both as an aviation hazard and potential adversarial activity, such as spying, NPR reported. So, this was the article I wanted to read because it gives you more of a clear idea and it's a reason why I picked my thumbnail type thing to be, um, and I wish I can give credit because like, I think his name's on the bottom there somewhere, but you know, what I'm using for my you know picture of the Statue of Liberty with the, bo- the balloon going by. I think it's a, it's their job to do a post, the post job to do an article like this for the everyday person. And interjecting these little things here and there, I think is a good way to get this type of thing across in some podcast form. Again, you can read the article. I'll put the link to it. Sometimes they have where well, you can listen to them. I don't know if this one has it, but... I, I could go over lots of things like if if you know little inconsistencies like oh we one report is oh no they watched it launch the China balloon launch and knew everywhere it went and decided to shoot it down over something somewhere but then another report will say something else getting through a lot of these things is painstaking 
I mean, if I want to verify, like I'm doing a science article and I don't want to look like an idiot and I want to go look at abstracts and stuff, I mean, it takes a little bit. And some of my advice I've given in the past is have a three click rule. If you don't want to post like fake articles and fake news, which was rampant on Facebook 2017 ish when I had my fucking whatever war, but you have a three click verify, check the links in there, click one. If it goes to dead links and mysterious stuff, well, then maybe you want to you know shy away from posting about a lie about what, you know, football players are doing and kneeling and all this shit. Anyway, there's so much wrapped up in this so much, you know, whatever you want to call it, red tape and political intrigue and all this fucking political games. But one thing I did like, and I thought was hilarious, another reason why I chose the article, and it's the fucking comments at the bottom. So getting out my own personal view on things like this, again, I am nowhere near little green men are uh, visiting us. But I acknowledge the concern of unidentified objects, no matter what they are. So let's get that, you know, before I end this and, you know, be become a reverent asshole, which I wind up normally doing in on the podcast of Rover. You can ask my whole slew of staff here. I'm seeing this thing about the world's powerful flashlight, and I want to fucking get one. But here's this is what the comments went to. In this article from the Post. Now mind you, New York, whatever, uh, you know. All right. Supposedly, most of the objects shot down are not balloons. They are odd-shaped objects with allegedly unknown properties. Everything coming out of the government regarding this has been provocative. Probably to confuse the public and cover up something they don't want us to know. Yes, but you see, this is how people fucking manipulate and mislead. That could be correct, but it's not going to lead me to thinking little green men and extraterrestrials. So, it will lead me to political intrigue and the political, you know, upping of technology and that whole fucking race they're doing. But that won't matter for people who, you know, just have a certain brain or just think a certain way. Now, there's a response to that. This is the response. <laughs> That's why they shoot them down so civilians cannot get to them. If civilians got there first, there would be photos and videos all over the internet and they would be exposed. They were not going to say anything about them until that guy in Montana blew their cover. All right, first off, you have a problem with Americans with guns to begin with. You want people like with mounted uh, guns, surface-to-air fucking weaponry to shoot down flying objects now? So, what are you saying? That people are going to follow these things? They have, they have to find when the military shoots it down and get there first? It's such bullshit. But it, told, it shows you, for me, it's an insight into where this person's brain is going. And the name is MAGA, by the way. Which I thought was fucking hilarious. So, now, the another one is Pill Poppin' Puppy, which is a fucking awesome name. I want to fucking get that tattooed on me. Pill Poppin' Puppy. I, I fucking like that. Seems like a villain or superhero's name. His only response is, it's called Political Cover. I agree. But, I'm not going into the little gray men. And I think that's what's great about how this works for everybody. Do not think for a second that this government, all governments, don't have at least some people who think they know about how the human brain works human behavior, evolutionary psychology, neurology, everything. Yes, uh, it is political cover in a sense, but again, it'll it'll fan the imagination of different people in different ways, and some people are conspiracy-oriented, and it's crazy. Uh, here we go. I'm 59 years old and cannot think of a worse president in my lifetime. <laughs> Carter was bad, at, but at least he had integrity and dignity. This guy Biden is nothing more than a carnival barker, snake oil salesman, and he definitely is the most corrupt and competent person to ever hold an elected office. Elected office. Okay, you see, I think that's factually wrong because we know Trump is the worst. I would say 
Biden is worse in his scheming and conniving and his knowing he's doing wrong. See, I think Trump was a buffoon, you know, a buffoon idiot who just was, you know, spoiled in life and ran a political party and off to, ran it off the rails, right? No, I think Biden's worse in a way because he is the guy who behind the scenes back in the day made these awful laws, you know, and he's, you know, just like Obama, you know, he's one of the most charismatic, best speaking presidents ever, but he was a horrible president in, 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 in general terms. So I'm going to say this is a wrong, you know, I think it's more fitting for Trump, but I would just put Biden in a more seriously evil way in that it is all a facade for him that he can make these decisions and will and has in the past. Whereas Trump was just like, you know, the Three Stooges or the Benny Hill music's playing whenever Trump's around. So I'm going to disagree with that. Oh, but the response to that is 100% correct. Why Americans can't see that Biden has been in bed with China for years for his own monetary gain and that he has no interest in protecting America from known hostile forces? Exclamation point. His seditious behavior cannot be allowed to continue. <laughs> you know, look, this is the board game they've rigged up. And yes, it it can change, and there's always hope for things, but the political machinations in America are fucked. Okay, but you can't just say his citizens. But no, I'm sorry, his Biden's fucking you know legacy with this fucking country will be one of just bland, um, you know, forgetfulness. You know, uh, besides the creepy factor of him smelling little girl's hair and awkward fucking shit about him his political tone will be one of just a bland you know just forgotten type shit unless you know political cover or machinations you know need something to happen because we know we've had things in the past we can verify vietnam war you know some people say we haven't been in a legitimate war since world war ii whatever the fuck anyway these replies it was awesome I couldn't say it better myself. I mean, we're looking at... Okay, uh, Carter is one happy guy since Jod had knocked him out of last place. There was a reason for being a senator from Delaware. There are 3.5 million companies incorporated into that state. The state is a gold mine for a politician. It's worse than that. He's just a figurehead. He's being told what to do and say, say by radical activists and interns. Radical activists and interns... You can go further than that. This number is leaving Buchanan in the dust. I don't get it. You know, a, lot, a couple of these fucking things. I'm not sure where they're going with it, but we get where these people are going with Pi Biden, right? Oh, here's one. Completely agree, old geezer. We need Putin to clean up this mess. Uh, that's pathetic. How could you not think Trump was a nightmare? Most of us do. Uh-oh. In any case... I'm going to start wrapping this up because I don't know how much more of this I can take. I've gone through this with so many friends and what is and some of it is delightful, awesome conversations and leads to great insights about each other. But when you get to these type of things and UFOs and when it starts leading down to Biden and, you know, he's being told what to say, my deep dive on Facebook got to Democrats are being possessed by evil spirits of satan i mean so listen everybody's got their torch right you gotta carry a torch i don't know again this is about the china balloon and ufos i don't give a fuck about uaps i'll read it in the article but it's not going to change the way i speak probably even with those fucking shysters and scam artists running their fucking entertainment division to get their clicks and get people, you know, brains all wondering about aliens and stuff. No, I'd rather see a concentrated effort on avoiding that stuff. And, hey, there's a concern with their unidentified objects laying around. There are hazards. Yes, we got spies. But it is a thing that has happened and been going on for ages. 
so many computer hacks are going on day to day and don't think for a second the united states is not free from this as a matter of fact we might be one of the worst of them all you only have to look to see how many troops we have in countries holding oil and just fucking turning countries into dust balls this is expected in a way yes i don't want things dropping out of the sky i don't want planes crashing into objects because people are trying to do their spy fucking thing but look, 60,000 balloons are sent out by a government organization for scientific purposes, meteorology and whatever. You got another division with 1,700. Look, there are things out there. And Bobby's got his fucking little cool drone that he's flying around in my fucking backyard, hovering above the fucking roofs, right? The people going to the parks now. And you don't fly your own little airplane that you can take fucking Mary's head off with because those things were fucking dangerous. You got this like three-foot fucking wingspan plane that you put together and you get it to fly you know people are crashing it into their little fucking kids and disaster like we've escalated that now be ready for like a, a hummingbird that's a fucking drone right flies insects uh, worms everything you can imagine look at some of the scientific breakthroughs some of these articles it is insane and to think that we're not finding things that are doing things that we can't explain is, uh, you know, is a little short-sighted in my opinion. I love the conversation. I love having it. And I love the people I have it with for the most part. But this political added into it, the tension with countries, it's just, I think, what they need or what they want. It's definitely what, you know, it's definitely what articles and news companies want, right? And I read an article from the Post, which... It's a god awful fucking article, uh, paper. I really try to stay away from these fucking things. But as soon as I see it, it has links to other things and it's somewhat genuine. I mean, like I said, in anything, there's always a good person. I'm not saying this person's good, but we have trends in our society and the way we think, cognitive biases, and they will continue on this path. We are getting. Way more technology, way more people have phones in their pockets that could videotape anything at any time. It's just going to increase because this awareness is increasing globally. And it's going to keep in increasing, I think. You are going to have to tell these fucking stories. You're going to have to hide secret ops programs and whatever. So I, I can see this being a potential, you know, uh, risk in just a reality of, hey, you know, we have countries spying on us. I just want to at least accept that we could be doing it also and we could be doing worse. And once I can accept that there's a possibility of that, maybe I would be in the same place as another country doing my own thing. Now, the political game with the words and UAPs and destigmatizing and why did it happen now? And, well, I think, like I said, it's, it happens in intervals. So always being an awareness, always being uproar brought up. And it could be, you know, uh, sleight of hand type trickery and, you know, psychology stuff and going down rabbit holes on purpose, disinformation on purpose. I mean, it gets really deep. But... I do want to emphasize again that although I don't go and lean or entertain much of little green men, I think it's a concern of uh, importance to, in general for people in any country, in any state, that there are things floating around, flying around, and not only could they be spying, they can cause hazards, right? And I could take it at that level, appreciate that. But the rabbit hole stuff, I'm done with. The entertainment schemers who just fucking want to tell some warped fucking story, I'm done with. I'm done with the, oh, uh, give me $500, I'll bring you out to some pasture and I'll telepathically communicate to uh, the Aronians and they'll give you, like, it's fucking enough. And 
cool guys who say things like, oh, I worked in a division. You could find some evidence. And he says, I worked on this and that. And I want to give some credence to that and say, okay, well, maybe we found a probe. Or did we really shoot down an alien spacecraft with aliens in it? And it all gets watered down. It gets fucking bogged down and diffused. And uh, you just can't tell where the beginning and end is. What's real thread here? What's this leading to? So I find it wasted energy in a sense. I guess that's where I'm getting to at the end of this. In any case, China balloons and UFOs. You know, I want to put something in my title, like something silly, like, oh, sorry, UAPs, right? With a question mark. Because I ain't fucking changing. I don't think I can change. Although sometimes it's good to accept things and new things and move on. Learn your fucking pronouns, people, right? That's my, you know, I guess my new tag maybe I'll put at the end. Anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. Best to you and yours. Till next time.